Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today we're here with uh, Tiffany Davis. She is from holistic.ketosis on Instagram. So we're so excited. Thanks for joining us, Tiffany. I'm so excited to be here. I know we were going to do this earlier and it didn't work out. So I'm so glad we're getting to do this before the holidays. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are struggling right now with staying on track. So we want to give them some inspiration today. And um, so tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got started with carnivore. And before that, you know, like when you started getting sick or gaining weight or whatever. Um, I, I think my story is a lot like other people. You know, we hit something stressful in our life and we learned to use food as a coping me mechanism. My mom died when I was 13. And uh, before that, I think I had a pretty healthy relationship with food. Uh, but pretty much from that point on, uh, developed a lot of really unhealthy relationships with my food choices and using that as a way to cope and deal with stress. And um, I, I steadily stayed on that course until after high school, gained a lot of weight after high school, uh, had a real bad marriage right after high school that didn't last very long, but the effects of said stress did. Um, so by the time I met my current husband, I was already 200 pounds and we've been married for 24 years. Um, but any marriage has stress, even the good ones. So, uh, by the time I got pregnant with our daughter, I was 220 and I kind of quit weighing myself after that. But in my thirties and, uh, up into my early forties, I was about 276 pounds, give or take five pounds here. I did lose weight. One time during that period, I lost 40 pounds for my brother's wedding and gave it right back. So 236 was my lowest weight uh, since probably age 25. And then um, I quit weighing myself. I was like, I just, I'm going to accept who I am. And I'm just a plus size woman. That's who I am. Got really into that identity. Um, but unfortunately, that also meant stop taking care of myself. So uh, I was 45. I stepped on the scale again, and I had reached over uh, 300 pounds. I was 319 pounds. And I really, um, I kind of said, I said sort of the reverse of people that are anorexic and they look in the mirror and they think that they see a fat person. Well, I looked in the mirror and I thought I was a thin person or at least normal. I really had not come to terms with how big I was until um, I was in a Kohl's uh, dressing room and I looked in the mirror and I saw myself and I took a picture and it still took a little while after that for me to say, okay, I have to do something and I need some, I need some help. For me, uh, that was uh, having the vertical gastric sleeve, which is a bariatric surgery where they reduce your stomach about 80%. Uh, I really needed that. I had lost, I had tried all the, you know, overeaters anonymous and weight watchers and all that stuff. I, I just couldn't do it. I needed, I needed a tool. And so I had that surgery in August of 2017. And in preparing for uh, what would life that would come after surgery, that's when I found keto. And I, my bariatric surgeon had already recommended us looking at that diet as a long-term means of success. And so I knew that after I started you know, eating normally again, normally, uh, that I would use the keto diet as a, a way to maintain because of over about 50% of people that have any kind of bariatric surgery regain their weight. And so I used the time of tight restriction to deal with some unhealthy habits, my attitude towards food, um, learning to love movement, just walking for a long, long time. And then it wasn't until uh, January, well, I guess it was December of 2018 that I found Dr. Baker and the whole world carnivore month. And I thought, well, that would be kind of an interesting challenge. I mean, I eat a lot of meat anyway. And I had kind of jokingly said I was carnivore because when you, um, when you have VSG and you have so little space, you know, stomach real estate, you need to lead with protein. And I took that very seriously when my surgeon said lead with protein or you're going to lose all your muscle and your hair will fall out, which it did anyway. Um, when, uh, when I started carnivore, I was wearing wigs because I had already had alopecia and the weight loss, just the rest of it just was like, peace out. <laughs> I'm gone. So when I started carnivore in January of 2019, 
of this year, I thought, oh, I'm going to do it for a month. And then we'll see from there. Went back on keto in February and I was like, well, I don't feel as good as I did on carnivore. And pretty much since March, I have been strict carnivore. In June, I quit wearing wigs. And I have had my hair cut about four times since June. Wow. So I, I keep it short. And the curl did not exist prior to carnivore. <laughs> so not only um, is it helping with uh, you know, maintaining my weight loss, but it brought my hair back. My skin is better. Um, it's helped a lot with just overall energy and food addiction. I think uh, I'm definitely an abstainer. And so the more uh, my, my list of things that I eat uh, reduces, the more control I have over it. So that's, that's awesome. My story. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's the Cliff Notes version. So and um, one thing you said that was interesting is like, the that idea of, of being healthy at every size you know I've had a lot of people say say that and um I just wonder what you think about it because it's it's pretty controversial you know? um I think you can be overweight and be healthy and I think you can be really thin and not be healthy I don't think the size that we wear or the number on the scale necessarily dictates our health. Um, I know marathon runners that have heart attacks and they on the outside look extremely healthy. And then I have friends who are in the obese category. Uh, you wouldn't think that when you look at them necessarily, but they're definitely overweight, but their blood work looks great and <clears throat> they're doing really well. Um, you know, in the markers that modern society or modern doctors would consider healthy. I just think there's a bigger picture to what health is um, past blood work. I think you probably would agree with that. Oh yeah. I mean, I was very sick and I was at my thinnest weight ever. And I was like about, I was, couldn't even get out of bed. So, um, definitely right. agree. Uh, and I mean, maybe there's an upper limit <laughs> for the weight, you know, I do think, I think you have to be realistic when you're when you're carrying a hundred pounds, you're carrying another human being basically with you at all times. You're going to be tired. It's going to take a, what, it, even if it didn't, <clears throat> for me, my triglycerides were very high. I was diabetic. I'm not anymore. My triglycerides are like 66. I mean, it's crazy. My liver was failing. I had fatty liver. Um, so it wasn't just that I didn't look optimal. My, I was failing and I was failing very quickly. So for 45, I had probably the blood work of somebody that was like 75 and had been obese for decades. Um, so yeah, it, I, I, I don't like to focus on whether or not, a, you know, whether I was a size 24 or I'm a size eight and right now I'm a size 10, which is where my body has decided it's really comfortable. But does that matter if I go, if I'm buying a 12, but I'm, you know, 20% body fat or 17% body fat. Um, obviously that, that doesn't, I, you know, I'm 5'10". So the size that I wear or the weight that's on the scale is going to be a lot different than someone that's, you know, 5'3". Yeah, uh, I think we have to be so careful with the number thing that we can focus on. And it's hard, um, especially when you've lost as much weight as I have, you know, I've lost 150 pounds. And so you can get very, very stuck on, uh, weight loss mode and not allow yourself to learn to relax and be comfortable in your own skin. I'm still working on that, I think. Absolutely. I mean, you can, uh, yeah, get so wrapped up in the size and the scale and the, the size of the genes and yes. that you're just insane and you're right back in that cycle that's and you say, well, just forget it. If I, if, it, if I'm right. not losing weight, then I might as well eat whatever I want or, you know. Exactly. And I mean, especially I have Hashimoto, so it, it really does make your body stay on a certain weight regardless of what you do. And I can make it really challenging. So I think people have to, and like you said about the lab work, it's so good because a few selected labs, whether you're fat or thin, 
or, you know, I don't like those words or whatever. Wow. But, right. Um, you know, sometimes people are thin, but they have all the triglycerides, the, the fatty liver, the, um, the high inflammation markers, the highly re- reactive CRP, that, and, you know, the high fasting blood sugar, all those things. And those are big red flags, even if they're 120 pounds, you know, so. Right. That's exactly it. And I think that um, we also are looking at blood work the wrong way. I mean, we don't have the cholesterol, which we're, you know, the, the modern doctors are telling us, lower your cholesterol, lower your cholesterol. But then I think all those low fat, bad type of diets that I did for years messed my hormones up. So um, I, you know, I have low thyroid not Hashimoto's, but I do have low thyroid and I have low adrenals that I'm still working on, even though I've lost all the weight, um, getting things regulated and getting my hormones to work properly. And I am 47. So, you know, uh, having the progesterone be the right uh, level and the testosterone and estrogen, you know, it's, I, I've seen the best markers for hormones being on carnivore. And I think that is a huge testimony to how well this diet can work or this way of eating can work for women um, in in getting some hormone regulation, which is not easy to do. Yeah, I mean, your hair is a good example of that because if your Mm -hmm. hair is falling out, that means you probably have a nutrient deficiency. I mean, hair is not a priority for the body, like breathing and... (laughs) Um, it's a priority for us right (laughs) but so uh, yeah when it's falling out that's a signal that something's in balance i mean off balance let me just kind of the light keeps changing and Um, and when i started losing my hair at 23 i had tons and tons of hair and i kept going to doctors and they say oh it's it's hereditary it's hereditary i said but none of the women in my family either side has lost their hair that should have been a huge red flag to these doctors like Something else is going on in this woman's body. She's too young to be losing her hair for no apparent reason. Well, that, that started during my four years as a vegetarian. Oh, well, there you go. Who knows what I what damage but, I did then. But that's considered so healthy. So they, don't, mm-hmm. they probably would have never picked that up as a red flag. Like No. It's like, oh, well, I... You're doing all the right things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was a vegetarian for about a year, and right after that's when my thyroid gave out. So, mm-hmm. um, so that's so interesting that you. So you feel like having the surgery. You know, sometimes it's just about the timing. Like, you know, maybe if you had found keto a few years before that, you wouldn't have changed your. You, you wouldn't have needed it. Or sometimes you need something drastic, kind of like an aha moment, to change your life. I, I think I think I needed it. Um, I, you know, I had tried paleo before that, and while I think it did some improvement, I still managed to find the highest carb paleo foods there were. Like I was eating plantain chips the same way that I was eating popcorn before, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I would still, you know, cheat on paleo. I needed I needed the drasticness, um, and it wouldn't have worked for me. Even surgery wouldn't have worked for me 10 years before that, even five years. I was not mentally ready. Uh, I think you have to be willing to do the mental and the spiritual aspects that are going to come with that kind of drastic move. You need to be ready for that. Because what I see a lot is these people that have the surgery and then they're, they're struggling because they're going, they're going through, um, really a withdrawal that they were I guess we're not expecting and I think you can have withdrawal anyway when you're when you're getting off your standard American diet you're I I still deal with it it's not like I'm perfect but I don't cheat um I haven't eaten popcorn or and I'm celiac so I can't eat gluten um there to me at this point now a cheat is like having a keto treat and for me, that's a bad idea. I did that on Thanksgiving and I felt like I was on a bender for a week after that. But I never want anyone to think, oh yeah, she's perfect. She's lost her weight. She's carnivore. And it was this magic pill that between the surgery and now carnivore that I suddenly don't have any challenges. And a lot of times when I put things out on my Instagram, I'll get messages like, 
you know, that's so severe. It's, you know, I said, you need to take the words comfort food out of your vocabulary. That, that phrase needs to be uh, eliminated. But I'm speaking to myself first. That was one of my favorite things to say. Oh, it's a comfort food. It's a comfort food. You know, mashed potatoes, a comfort food. But food is not, it's not a friend. It's not a loved one. It cannot comfort you. It has no ability to do that. So it's either going to fuel your body with nutrients or it's going to fuel your addiction. I think it's pretty cut and dry. And I know a lot of people will see there are big gray area in that for me, but that comes back to what was your prior relationship with food? And mine was being an addict. So you don't tell an alcoholic, well, you know, once you're, you've been clean for a while, then you can have a little bit of beer or a little bit of wine. You can't do that. And it's the same thing for someone like me that's highly, highly addicted to anything that's even if it isn't really, uh, it's in the keto realm, if it still tastes and looks like the things that I used to eat before, I'm generally going to overeat it. Because I'm, I'm two and a half years out from surgery, so I can eat. I'm not <laughs> eating, you know, I'm not eating those little tiny portions. That I the stomach has before. stretched out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was telling uh, Tiffany before that my dad had gastric bypass surgery in 2005, and so... I was very familiar with the whole process. I mean, I know it's a little bit different than the VSG, but it's similar as far as what happens afterwards. Yeah. And, um, so I know a lot about that whole process and, and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, it, it did help him a lot in that he, he lost a lot of weight. And I think at that time, he was really, really on the verge of kind of a heart attack. So I think it was the right time, you know, so I mean, now he's 75. So it's like, well, you know, that's pretty good. He's made it a long time. So, yeah. you know, that was pr in 2005. So, you know, over 15 years ago, or something like that, 15 years ago. So that was really helpful for him at that time. And, you know, if would he have made a different decision today, I don't know, you know, but um, sometimes it's just what you need at the time to do it. You, so, you, right. But it's like any other tool. You, if you use it and it works well for you, then it's going to be fantastic. But once you quit working it, um, it it's not gonna it's not gonna save you forever. And I think and that misconception is people don't realize that after a while, like at first, sugar makes you sick, right? And then real after, sick. After like a year or so, you can tolerate it though. Yeah, and even things that were not, you know, even stevia sweet and stuff would make me kind of sick. Anything that was sweet flavored. So I was telling you before, the interesting thing is I was pretty much carnivore for the first year after my surgery because my bariatric surgeon said lead with protein. I did that. And so it, I didn't realize what I was doing was really pretty close to the carnivore diet. So I think it was a natural progression for me to get here. I just had to figure it out. <laughs> so um, let's talk more about carnivore. What's your typical day of eating like? Well, I'm a little bit different than uh, most carnivores because I eat three times a day. I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule for me, but I do still have reduced stomach space where even though I'm in, I can eat an eight ounce ribeye. So it's not like I can't eat. But um, I find that I do better on three smaller meals a day versus one big or two big meals. So usually in the morning, I have whatever leftover meat I cooked uh, the night before with a couple of eggs, uh, coffee. I actually have coffee. Um, I, I'm an early bird. Like I get up at three o'clock in the morning. So I'll have coffee and I'll go to the gym or go to the walk, go on my walk. And so I probably won't eat breakfast until about eight o'clock in the morning. But while that's super early for other people, I've, I've already been up for, you know, five hours at that, at that point. And then um, I do try to stop eating before 6 p.m. because I do go to bed very early. And I think it's, uh, you know, if I'm going to go to bed at 8, I really don't want to go to bed with a full stomach. I want to be done. Uh, and I eat mostly meat or mostly uh, red beef. <laughs> I know what you mean. Beef. I eat mostly beef. I think I need coffee today. Um, I will occasionally eat chicken and sometimes fish. And it's not that I don't like it. I just don't feel as satisfied. When I eat red meat, I, I feel satisfied. 
and I can go through my day. Um, I occasionally eat pork, but yeah, beef's my, beef's my jam. So <laughs> that's what I eat most of the time. Oh yeah, I'm the same way. And I mean, I love seafood, but it's more like a special occasion thing or something like that. It's not. Or a side dish. Yeah. yeah. But a shrimp on the side of my ribeye, so. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's nice to have the variety. And I do have dairy, um, although I don't have a ton of it. Mostly I'll have uh, a little heavy whipping cream in my coffee and a little bit of cheese here and there just to keep things interesting. But if you took cheese away, I'd probably be fine. But not my butter and not my heavy whipping cream. I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah, well, butter, I mean, I think that's kind of like, I don't think that's really dairy. I think that's like just it's more of a fat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I use ghee. I buy a lot of ghee because I feel like if I even have some butter or like dairy is kind of a gateway drug for me. So, so if I eat some butter, then I'll be like, Oh, how about some cheese or whatever. I just feel um, all right. So are you worried about, I mean, we talked a little bit about vitamin deficiencies I mean, since you have lowered stomach capacity, are you worried about vitamin deficiencies? And I mean, people no. worry about that anyway on carnivore. Um, I'll tell you the only deficiency, and this is to me specifically has nothing to do with the carnivore. I actually um, have a hard time absorbing iron. And so I'm working with a naturopath that's trying to figure out if that's something that's physiological to me specifically, or if it has to do with the bariatric surgery. Um, so, but it's not extremely low, but considering how much red meat I eat, it shouldn't be. And the only supplements that I take are in support of my adrenals and my thyroid, not for nutritional. I don't take a multi, I don't take, um, any real vitamins and I'm doing great. So I just have blood work done and everything is great. My B vitamin is great. D is great. Um, and like I said, it, the iron's a, lo a little on the lower side but it's not to where it's affecting my health wise. Actually, um, when I was paleo, I was vitamin D deficient, vitamin B deficient. Um, I can't even imagine what I was as a vegetarian. So <laughs> no, I'm, I don't need supplements as far as nutritional deficiencies, but I do take some things to support um, the adrenals and the thyroid that I, that I struggle with outside so, of my diet. Like a thyroid replacement or is it just a supplement? I take, yeah, I take nature throid. So huh. um, I didn't, I never did well on synthroid. So um, I just recently switched from armor to the nature throid and I like it a lot. And we're still sort of playing with it. Like I went to, they took me too high. And so now I'm coming back down, um, which is a great benefit of working with a naturopath because I look at the full picture instead of let's just look at the thyroid. And so he's taking me down backing off a little bit so that's been nice and it i'm finding you know if you over treat your thyroid you're going to feel just as miserable as if you don't treat it so backing down has helped and then i take um an adrenal support so it has a granular in it but it also has uh vitamins that specifically support adrenal function so those are the things. And I take uh, emu oil just for hormone balance. And th that's been fantastic for me. And it's helped my sleep a lot. Mm. I don't, I mean, I'm not really familiar with that one. What's the brand of the adrenal? Oh, you know what? I just switched. I was with RLC Labs, which is fantastic. But we just switched my brand and I don't remember what it's called. Yeah, so you buy it there at the, the office. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you can get the, R the RLC lab is a great quality and my natural pack uses it sometimes and that's available on Amazon. You just want to make sure you get it from the manufacturer because a lot of times you get things on Amazon, they're not really from the makers. Like resellers. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So do you worry about your muscle meat and your you know, that whole thing the with whole nose to tail. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think nose to tail is fantastic. Uh, I absolutely believe that you're going to get a lot of benefits from eating the liver and heart and kidneys. Um, <laughs> no kidneys. I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just don't, I 
haven't found a necessity for it yet. Um, I do have some liver and heart in my freezer that I got from a local grass-fed company that I plan to grind up and put into some burgers like uh, Dana Vega does. I think that's brilliant. So I think if you, there's a gnat flying around, sorry. Uh, if you are if you know you have nutrient deficiencies, I think nose to tail is super important um, because that's going to get you feeling better faster than taking a vitamin. Uh, but I think, I think Sean Baker has shown everybody you can eat uh, muscle meat exclusively and do just fine. And Laura Spath does that as well. So, you know, I've seen her eat. She eats all muscle meat. I don't see her going for liver. <laughs> so I think it's beneficial. I don't think it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, I mean, I think, and also I think it depends on what you're trying to do. I mean, how sick you were to begin with and yeah. that kind of thing. And also if you're in the stages of having a child or infertility oh, or things like that, I mean, you know, ramp it up. And I mean, like you said, you're trying to figure out your anemia it might be a good idea to add some more liver. Cause that is the, str- the best source of, yep. of <laughs> iron. Yeah, it's in my freezer and I just need to like get over it. And, uh, you know, as a kid, I liked liver, so I may really enjoy it and just think that I won't. So I think it's a, a little bit of the mind telling you you're not going to like it. Well, I mean, so. beef liver is way different than chicken liver. Like chicken liver oh, is, yeah. very, is very mild and beef liver is like a kick in the stomach. So, <laughs> so if you're afraid of, and they're both very similar as far as the nutrition profile. So give the chicken liver a chance if you're scared of the beef liver. And, and- add some bacon because that makes the chicken liver just fantastically amazing. Yeah. It's like meat candy. Now, what do you, now what do you think about snacking? And I know, you know, some people have said if they eat pork rinds and I'm sure cheese and other things that they can gain weight. And how do you, how do you um, balance that? You know, I, most of the time I don't snack. I do like pork rinds, but they're what I call a slider food. They just kind of slide right down no matter how full or empty I am. So I try to kind of not have them around all the time. But there are times like when we go to the movies or something, and this is that whole mental thing. I mean, I could I get through a movie without pork rinds? Absolutely. And most of the time what I do is I get a coffee from Starbucks, and I will just drink that during it. But occasionally I like to have the pork rinds during a movie. I don't think snacking in and of itself is a bad thing, but I think we can get so into that grazing where we're just eating all day long and our body never gets a break that that's bad. So you have to decide, are you feeding your stomach or are you feeding boredom, hunger, stress, whatever, which I think a lot of times that's what snacking comes down to. But I think we can get so dogmatic with this idea that this is the only way to do carnivore. You have to do OMAD and you have to do liver and you have to do this. Or, And I think we could probably have two snacks a day, three meals a day and still do well. Will you meet your weight loss goals? Maybe not. You might, you might stall out by eating a lot of snacks, especially cheese. I think that kind of can be inflammatory for most people. So I think you, you have to watch that. I don't think it's, And I think you can eat within a window. And if you're eating only in that eight hour window, it really, you're probably going to be fine. There's just so, it depends on where you are in your journey. And for me, I'm kind of in that where I have to see what's working. So I, I tweak a lot. I find I do a lot better with the the three small meals and not snacking because when I'm snacking, it's usually because I'm not hungry and bored. Yeah, or oh. you're stressed out or something bad happened. Mm-hmm. And my daughter totally called me out on it the other day. I uh, We were trying to re- get this refinance done for our house. And once again, there was something that came up and we had to fix that. And I sat down, opened pork rinds. She's like, are you stress eating? I was like, oh my gosh. She totally called me out on it, you know. So I did like dial it back and put the pork rinds away and deal with it without food so <clears throat> so dude, that's a long uh, answer <laughs> but, no no I mean yeah just almost like the consciousness is the most important thing like noticing 
okay, what am what am I really doing here? Am I just eating because I'm not at my husband or whatever, you know? Right. So, um, yeah. What do you? I'm really lucky because I live in a house where with my husband and my daughter are also carnivore. So, well, my daughter's mainly carnivore. She's she'll do some keto things, but. Uh, so I'm lucky that I'm surrounded with people that eat the way I eat and support me and are, my house is not filled with a bunch of temptation. And how so old is I'm she? really lucky on that. She's just turned 14. Okay. And we never weighed her because I didn't want her to focus on that, but she went from a size like 14, 16 to a size eight right. in less than a year. And she looks fantastic. Her skin's glowing. And, you know, she has some learning challenges and I really feel like the carnivore is repairing some brain synapses. I have no proof to that other than I homeschool her and I'm watching how she's grown as a student in, um, in this year. It's just kind of amazing for me yeah. to see that. And she's, we co-op with um, three other families. So every Monday she watches these other girls eat multiple popsicles and uh pop tarts and talk about how they're vegetarians and she's Ugh. like yeah wow that's she's like mom all they do is eat junk food all day long so she's becoming aware she's taking it on for herself and just recently uh we were talking about what we're doing ketocon as a family and she goes you know i think i want to put on some muscle before ketocon i was like okay Great. So uh, she's going to add in some weight training to her Zumba, which she does. That's totally her own thing. Uh, I have never, I went to Zumba once. Uh, I am not coordinated. I am not meant for Zumba. So, and <laughs> she has been very uh, against weight training because she thought she was going to look like a boy or she'd get too big of muscles. And now she's seeing that um, that's not happened with me and that I'm stronger and healthier and happier for the, for the weight training that I do now, she wants to join in on that. So, Oh, wow. That's so great. I mean, when you see that them taking it on as their own project or their own, with their own um, motivation, it's just amazing. Well, and hopefully she's laid a foundation for herself that she will never have uh, the kind of weight problems, health problems, food addiction issues that I had um, in my early 20s and on. So she's starting young. She's seeing, uh, you know, how much better she feels. She saw her dad lose 100 pounds, and he didn't have surgery. He's just done carnivore. So it's been an amazing transformation in our house in the last two and a half years. Wow, that's amazing. You'll have to send me a picture of of your family. Okay. So uh, when did your – tell us a little bit about your husband. What did he do? Um, he kind of took the watch and see approach. He really did not want me to have surgery. He just was really frightened by that whole idea. And then knowing me, he's never seen me under 200 pounds because when we met, I was 200 pounds. So it was kind of the unknown, you know, and, and he thought, well, maybe I was going to lose all this weight and leave him. I don't know. But, you know, it took about a year for him to be comfortable with what was going on. And then really me showing him, I mean, look at this research and all these books as I love to read. So I, you know, constantly showing him, it's not just my surgery. It's also the things that I'm eating and you should do this challenge with me. And so he finally just, um, he would eat whatever I was making at the house. But then if we were out at a, you know, a, some kind of social gathering or he went out with his op somebody from his office he would eat whatever he felt like eating and he finally in the summer decided no you know I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do this for myself and started eating that way all the time and then started going to the gym he weighs now what he weighed when our first daughter was born which was in 1995 so uh, or 1987 when she was born so he but he has a ton more muscle. He's um, at 47, ha is more muscular and in better shape than he's probably ever been in his entire life. So he lost 100 pounds starting when? Well, it started about, um, it's been a little bit over a year, but the majority of it was in this last six, six months. months. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Well, you know, men, they sneeze and lose weight. So it's a little bit different for them. But I mean, he it, the, he calls himself a dirty carnivore because he likes jalapenos on everything, but it works for him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, men can take a shower and lose weight or something. It really, they really can. But you know, when we met, he was extremely, extremely thin, but um, his, he, I, hopefully he doesn't mind me telling this, but he had these love handles that even as an extremely thin man and even as a teenager that he had, and those are almost gone. And he attributes that to uh, just eating the meat. It's probably, but, you know, hormone balance thing too. Yeah. I think so. I think so. So yeah, he feels great. He looks fantastic. Everybody's he's in the place now where I was, you know, a, a year into my journey where everyone that hadn't seen me in a while was like, Oh my gosh, look at you. What did you do? So now they're doing that for him and it's, he's having a lot of fun with that. He's enjoying it. Well, it's great. You guys can enjoy. It's almost like a new lease on life. I mean, especially as your kid yeah. goes out, I mean, she's going to soon be graduating and everything. Yes. We're, we're going to be done. empty nesters. So after raising four kids, it's going to be an interesting, uh, the next five years will be very interesting as we finish up our, our journey as uh, four kids. Wow. Yeah. And homeschooling all of them. Well, never losing weight. I mean, how could you lose weight when you're having a kid every year? Oh, well, my kids, I only have one child that I actually have biologically. So oh, okay. um, my, my oldest two, I adopted, but they're my husband's biological kids. And oh. then our youngest daughter, um, we've had her since she was a day old, but uh, we were fostered to adopt parents in Texas. And that's how she came to live with us. So, oh, okay. And I've actually raised seven kids over the years with uh, nieces living with us and foster kids. And oh, you yeah. sound like so that. we always had a house full. <laughs> a very, so it's very quiet. <laughs> nurturing person. Um, all right. Well, what, what are some of your uh, tips for dealing with the holidays? Uh, tips for the holidays. I think, be, going in with a plan um, is is a really good idea and not letting yourself be intimidated by your family and friends who, you know, who already probably feel bad about the way they're going to eat that night. So they want you to join them in that uh, and being okay with saying, no, I don't eat that and really changing your vocabulary from I can't eat that because I get asked, oh, can you eat that? Can you, I can eat whatever I want. I choose not to eat that. So those, those are power words. I don't eat that over. I can't eat that. And I think if you stay away from the buffets and stay away from the table or focus on the people that you're there to see and not the food plans are the biggest thing. And my, the biggest mistake I made on Thanksgiving was thinking I could do just a teeny bit of the pumpkin, the keto pumpkin cheesecake and that I would be fine. Uh, and it wasn't. So uh, you need to know yourself well enough and be honest with yourself that you, you need to stick to the course. It's one, one party. If you can get through that one party or it's that one meal, you just have to get through that one meal. And I hear a lot of people say, go full. Mm, that's not always a great option, especially if you will eat when you're full. So I think it's better to, if, you, if they're not going to have the foods you, that you want, bring your own plate Yeah, and, and just go with a plan. Yeah. I mean, I don't like to go full because I feel like I'm going to get more scrutiny that way. If you're not mm-hmm. eating at all, people are going to notice that, you know, yeah. and they're like, what's wrong with you? Ah. You know, so it's my, I think it's better to go, but go knowing that you have a pot roast or you have a turkey or you have a ham or whatever you can mm-hmm. know what the proteins are going to be so that when you yes. get there you can just focus on eating that and then just eat as much as you can of that and then you're going to be like you won't really care I mean I and really everybody's looking at their own plate most of the time anyway as long as you're eating and you're enjoying the time together nobody really cares I'm really lucky my family ha- hasn't really given me a hard time because they know how sick I was so they don't get it. They don't get the carnivore thing, but they're not arguing it. They might ask some questions and I'm happy to answer those questions and I don't get offended. But 
my biggest thing that I tell people is vegans don't eat steak on holidays. They don't do that because their, their way of eating is the way they eat all year long. They don't yes. take a break from it. They don't cheat on it uh, because it's Christmas. They're not going to eat Christmas ham because it's going to make mom feel better. Well, not when anybody's watching, right? <laughs> at least, yeah. At, you know, in, in, at least in theory. So the same should go for us. We don't, we don't eat that just because it's Christmas, because we know why we eat the way. And, and if you don't know why you're eating carnivore, you, you need to know. You need to have a why. Because if you're just doing it because it's the latest thing you've seen on Instagram and you're excited about that or you've watched some videos on YouTube, that's not going to stick. You need to have your own reason that you're trying it or the only, your own reason that you're sticking to it. And maybe writing that out. I'm really big on writing things out. And reminding yourself, how did I feel the last time that I decided not to eat on my plan or, or to, you know, to take a break and did I lose control in how long did it take me to get that back? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. And maybe like focusing on like writing out, what are you really feeling? What are you upset about? Oh, what yeah. are you really wanting to to eat for you know I mean I know it's hard when I mean especially on Thanksgiving and Christmas it's like you're like well I deserve this and or it's just one day it's a special occasion and you have all these tapes in your head and and then you have all these traditions that you've done all your life and um you know it's funny on Thanksgiving I wanted to make some keto dessert and like you said a pumpkin cheesecake (laughs) and then uh I asked my my sister and my dad, and, and they they said they both said we don't want it, don't bring it, just don't bring it. And I was like, okay, well then that that solves it for me too. And we ended up having like decaf coffee and cream after dinner. That is my go-to dessert. It's yeah. a great option. Yeah. And the, and you can leave, and you're not going to be. Uh, one thing I did notice on uh, you know the last couple Thanksgivings, uh, I wasn't bloated. I didn't feel like I needed a nap immediately, even though I did eat turkey. Um, and yeah, I mean, I did eat the keto treat. I had, uh, but it wasn't like I overindulged that day. It, sh- but it just kicked off cravings for the week after that. But um, it's nice to not feel like, oh, I'm going to be sick or I need a nap. Um, I was able to in- have, you know, play games and have great conversation. And um, I did see every, you know, everyone else suffering because they yeah. overdid it and they were uncomfortable and, you know, they had to go change their pants or whatever. And I, it's just not worth it anymore. You didn't and know. I can play that same, like you said, that tape. There is that old me that said those things so many times. And that's what kept me obese for over 20 years. I need to tell her to be quiet a lot. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really, really lucky that I was able to tell my family, look, cause they, they are very good moderators. They can have rebel ice cream and not eat the whole pint. And then it can stay in the, in the freezer for a week. Whereas if it's in the freezer, I'm like, wow, maybe I should have some, no, no, I don't need any, you know, and I like toggle, but if it's not there, I'm fine. I'm not going to make an effort to go out and get it. So they've been really good. And, in when I said, look, I, we need to keep the treat stuff out of the house for a while because, um, Thanksgiving kind of, you know, scrambled my thoughts for a little bit, having just that little bit as an abstainer, then I have to rework my whole system. So it's just better for me to not even go there. And I am not tempted from non-keto things. It's not like when there's again, celiac. So there's a, you know, plate of, of cookies and cake and things like that at a family gathering. I'm not tempted to eat that because I know exactly what that's going to do to me too. And there's no, um, there's no way of making that okay. Mm-hmm. But if I, if I make a treat that is keto, then I can justify that. So it's just better not to have it. Yeah. I mean, I have been gluten free since 2009. So because of my autoimmune disease. So tell people what does happen if you get 
gluten? Uh, I might, for me, my stomach will be upset for days. I will have ankle swelling, headaches. Um, it's pretty, every reaction is a little different. And I didn't know that I was truly celiac for a very long time. Um, I knew that I had some gluten intolerances, but, um, it was just really recent that I found out that I actually do have celiac disease. And so that explains it, but I had medical doctors like, well, if you think you're in, you know, celiac, just don't eat gluten. And it's so much more than that. But for me, it's, it's almost like getting a flu. Um, I really feel sick if I eat that and it isn't gone in, in 24 hours when all the food is digested. It, it stays in my system for a really, really long time. So it's just not worth it for me. Absolutely. I mean, I don't feel anything. I mean, if I ate a big bunch of bread or something, I might feel it, but like, but I just know that it's going to be way better if I just stay away from it. And plus it cuts that, it's kind of like that wall, like, okay, it's not an option for me to have a little bit of the bread basket. It's just, that's not even there. Yeah. You know, it's just it's like, not even an option. No. And you know, to me, like uh, the bread stinks now. Um, all I smell is yeast and it doesn't smell good to me. So it's strange because I used to think like when you would go into a bakery and like French bread or something like that would be, you know, baking to me, it smelled so great. Now it's just, it's stinky. So I don't, that doesn't tempt me, thankfully. It still smells good to me, but I think that I'm more of a sweet person. I never was like, I could leave the chips. I can leave the bread. It's all about the sweets. <laughs> so um, it was both for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, and so I can do some dark chocolate. I can do uh, an occasionally, but I'm not right now because I need to get my system cleaned out. <laughs> so. Well, that's good that even, you know, you gotta listen to your body. Some people can have like a one keto treat on a holiday or something and get back right back on it. And other people, it turns into a two week binge or, yeah. um, so, or <laughs> months or there they or go forever. Yeah. yeah. So, um, tell everybody where they can find your, your Instagram and everything. Well, I'm holistic.ketosis on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Um, I do have a Facebook page the, that's holistic ketosis, no dot. And I just started blogging um, and it's holisticketosis.com. I actually just put up a carnivore Christmas list. So what to get your carnivores for Christmas. So I, it's developed from what I gave my family for my wish list, like knives and smokers and <laughs> stuff I'm like I can't believe this is what I'm asking for for Christmas but yeah Instagram's my main uh, place that you can find me well awesome well it's been great to hear your story and I think this will help a lot of people so uh, make sure and subscribe to my channel for more interviews and tips and also do the bell ring the bell so that you get the notifications every time I make a new video please like this video so more people see it and we appreciate you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Thanks so much. Hi there. Thanks so much for watching the last video. I really appreciate it. Now I want to make sure that you know that I just wrote an ebook all about how to do the carnivore diet and it's called the 30 day carnivore diet challenge. And it is just amazing. I am just so proud of it. I worked on it for so long and it's 182 pages. It has two meal plans. It has shopping lists. It has so many amazing features and it's not just the straight carnivore diet. It has my tweaks and recommendations on how to do it more effectively, more efficiently. And if you get it before January 1st, you will be added to our coaching group where you will get my free coaching for one month. And I will be doing live coaching every single day. Or my sister, who co-wrote it with me, will be doing the live coaching every single day. So we're going to trade off and do that coaching group together. So it is going to be amazing. And I don't want you to miss out. So make sure you buy my book before January 1st. And you will be added to that group. And it is just going to be so much fun. So I can't wait to see you in there. So swipe up to get my book or visit the link in the profile or go to carnivore30.info, carnivore30.info. So thanks so much. See you next time. Bye-bye.